What is plasticulture? Such a system may offer many benefits. Earlier crop production, 7 to 21 days earlier. Higher yield, 2 to 3 times higher. Cleaner and higher quality produce. More efficient use of water resources. Reduced leaching of fertilizer, especially on light and sandy soils. More efficient use of fertilizer. Reduced soil and wind erosion. The potential decrease in the incident of disease. Better management of certain insect pests. Fewer weed problems. Reduced soil compaction and eliminating of root pruning. And the opportunity to double or triple the crop with maximum efficiency. The drip irrigation is an important part of the plasticulture production system. It should be used with plastic mulch for the greater benefits. Drip irrigation can save as much as 80% of the water used by other irrigation methods. Because vegetables are planted in rows, a drip tube or tape is used to wet a continuous strip along the row. The outlet holes are spread from 8 to 12 inches apart and is mostly common spacing for vegetable crops. Once a drip irrigation system has been installed, it makes economic and environmental sense to fertilize the crops via irrigation water. If done properly, this results in a more efficient use of fertilizer and probably reduces the fertilizer contamination of groundwater. More nutrients are taken up by the crop and fewer leach down below the plant root zone. small stake in the ground. This is going to pull out. <laughs> Tying the plastic to it. Okay, got it finished putting it together. Lay it down. He needs to just uh Well, and it has it. Okay, he's getting the first row in.
uh, at a women in ag conference that we put on a couple of months ago and he said he was coming down here and uh, so I thought well maybe we can help put on a workshop if you're going to be out here he's going to be out here laying the uh, laying the material we'll try to invite the public and see who wants to show up and uh, uh, I was in charge with uh, setting up the workshop and all Micah had to do was come here and do is lay it and make sure the weather was good. <laughs> so uh, you can see who's to blame for the weather. Uh, uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, we have with us today, and, and Micah's going to uh, uh, talk to us right here in a, in a minute, but Micah Anderson, he's with the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture. and. Uh, and he's uh, in charge of this plastic culture program all over the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we also have uh, Marty Montague as our Oklahoma State University County Extension Agent for here in Choctaw County. And uh, if you're growing vegetables and growing them under plastic culture, nine times out of ten you're going to need need to know what Marty uh, has to tell you about soils and and. Uh, uh, fertilizer and herbicides and all those kind of things. Mr. Carl Henderson, Carl's from Langston University, but stationed here in southeastern Oklahoma, and we appreciate him coming over and uh, and helping us out a little bit today. Uh, I'm going to turn it over now to Micah, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the program, and then Marty will tell you a little bit about what he does with OSU Extension. All right. Good to see everybody. Glad everybody come out. It looks like a, this really looks like a pretty good, uh, uh, you know, vegetable growing area around here. Seems like a lot of people grow vegetable well at Valiant Market. I stopped there last year and noticed that, uh, you know, there was a lot of different farmers that, that bringing stuff to that market and stuff. But uh, this this plastic culture is just a, uh, uh, it's just a, a use of plastic to uh, enhance uh, vegetable growing. And, uh, and, it's, and it's really not just, just this, it could even be going to, it's like kind of like a hoop house, greenhouse and stuff, and you put, you know, you, it's the sun shines through there and warms things up, same way they does in that uh, black plastic, it warms the ground up, and it protects, gives you some protection because it won't let no weeds grow, just where you got that hole and you put that plant in there, and you might get a weed or two there, and you just pull it up by hand, or, or you live, it ain't gonna have to fight a whole lot with no weeds. And, and the other nice thing about it is it, uh, that ground, after it rains and dries up, you can go out there and you pull that plastic up and it's just like it, you just till it with a, with a rope tiller. I mean, he, my brother called me and he, it's a three year program. Like they'll be on it for three years and then when I'm starting spinning over the side, it kind of makes the machine get over with it. And uh, the other ones don't have that, and, and uh, there's another one that, that out of Missouri you can get, and he could and he could use it here on this in this farm, if he, you know, because he got real soft ground. It doesn't make quite a bigger bed, but it does lay the plastic and, and it lays out the drip for you. Uh, so it's a little lighter machine, to do, but it still do it. And but uh, it's a great system uh, because your your plants are not fighting. Uh, through hard ground, the roots are not, and you're not chopping the roots when you're chopping, chopping it. Because when you chop, and you you're gonna chop the roots a little bit. Well, you're not doing that very much, and and well, so there's no, there's no till, there's, there's no tilling except maybe the middle. Yeah, you could till the middles if you want to with a walk behind, or some people have me to widen them out, and they go through there with their tractor. Yeah. Some people even have them little tractors, you know, and they what we <laughs> widen them out, and they go through there with the tractor. Uh, and some, well, I think the best method actually is to till one time with a walk behind. If you got tomatoes and okra, the stuff to go straight up, and from then mow it. Hmm. That way, you ain't walking in mud out there trying to harvest and stuff. Uh, that seemed like been the best method. Now, with the watermelons and cantaloupes, I don't suggest do that. I think you need to till a little bit because if, if, if you know anything about watermelon cantaloupe, some roots run as far as the vine. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to keep my middles tilled between my watermelon cantaloupes and then that way them roots can run out there too and, and help, you know, they get a lot underneath that plastic, but they also can run out from underneath yeah. there. They run out, the roots run out underneath the plastic in the middle. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I couldn't swear to it, but I know growing with watermelon Now 
now that the uh, plasticulture system is all in uh, on our field, we're going to show you and demonstrate how to do it and some of the things involved in this. For instance, this right here is a Model 320 uh, manufactured by Pentair. And what, what this is is just a swimming pool pump. Uh, you know, for putting in uh, like bromide. And so for our purposes, this works just fine. And what's great about this is that you can actually put fertilizer, uh, liquid fertilizer, right down here and turn your dial to get your concentration. And then it comes over and of course you have your, your uh, filter that uh, helps filter your water just in case you know you have anything in there and it goes from there into your your main feeder line and what this is 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 just a, a heavy-duty plastic which is about uh, an inch and a half in diameter once we turn the water on and it go ahead and blows up and then it, it goes and it does each line and I'll explain that for instance, it comes to your valve, and the valve is a pretty simple, and you can take and turn this on and off for your water. And what that does is you can stop every single row that you want to stop and leave one open, for instance, if yet say you need to put calcium in this specific row, or if one row needs than another, that's what this valve can do. And it's hooked to your, your line. Now what this is, is your drip line that runs all the way through. And it drips approximately one drip per second that I have noticed going all the way down the line. And you have little injectors that go in there. And what I'll do is I'll show you the inside and it has just a little drip feeder in there and so as the water travels through the line it just goes right to this little feeder and drips on out. Now, this is meant to operate at up to 20 PSI's. And at 20 PSI's, you're going to get approximately 48 or 0 0.48 gallons per hour is what it's doing. And so it's very efficient as far as conserving on water because the plants are getting that amount of water instead of wasting it on ground that does not have plants. You can operate the system at 10 PSI's and it cuts down your water flow. And so it's really nice to have an adjustable water flow like that depending on your PSI's. Now we have two pumps here, or two, two injectors, because this is over an acre. And we wanted to divide both sections up. And so that's why it actually required two to do it. What's also great is you have little fittings, for instance, like this. And so if you misjudge on your tape, you slide this in, turn the knob, put your other piece on, now you've spliced your line. So you don't have to worry about coming short when you're doing it because you can't fix the problem. Another thing is when you run your line all the way down, at the very end, you have to be sure to tie it. And you just tie it like this to stop the flow. And you might put one or two ties in and that way you don't have a bunch of water pouring out one end. <laughs> now what I'm going to show you is we're going to go down 
and I'll show you actually how to put the valve this tool inside your right here is well. very simple it just has a little tiny nipple and it's actually hollow just in case you got pressure or water but what you do is you have to take and on this hose and this is the toughest part I'm telling you is you have to be able to puncture this right in the seam line and it's a little hard so you really got to kind of push and squeeze on this nipple and move it around slightly then you have to be able to take the valve and stick that right inside now this is the hardest part and it's best to get it wet pull this out and you really got to push and kind of work it and you got to squeeze and work it and there it is it's in now this is real simple turn this counterclockwise fit your line on turn it and it's now locked into place now when you do this you want to make sure that your drip feeder is facing down it will work if it's facing up but then it has to roll over the top so it's best to have it facing down and that's how simple it is now what we're going to do is show you how to actually plant and it's it's very simple on on these steps we'll be right back it's just a nice razor arrow and that way you're not down or anything you can stand here measure your distance of what you want and you just poke it right through now then you can enlarge the hole any size you want or if you have to fill it in with a little bit of dirt or I should say soil <laughs> and that's the easiest way I found and for instance this row right here has English peas and as you can see they're starting to grow up through the plastic what this plastic does is for instance it'll keep down the uh, the weeds of course so you don't have to worry about the weed eating in between you know your plants another thing it'll do is it'll cut down on any bugs that are actually in your soil and so there's another advantage another advantage is if you might have noticed we have white and black okay for instance the white will help reflect the heat better and so we put cold vegetables in this that we want to extend our season with for instance the English peas now if you have a warm climate uh, plants that love the warmth and especially if you don't have an area where you have a longer season the black plastic is great to use because it'll warm the soil about 10 degrees I have found and so this can extend your season by another three weeks and so for instance here uh, we use it for watermelon cantaloupe uh, okra certain things like that so in a cold, cold climate that's something to really think about another thing is you can get this in red now red is supposedly great for tomatoes uh, for instance you can get it in blue which is better for cantaloupe uh, you can actually put clear down which conducts heat better than black if you can believe that but it doesn't have the weed blocking capabilities as the black does so these are certain things that you uh, want to consider when you're doing this another thing and I didn't show is I energized my system and I just wanted to show how big around your main feeder gets and so now it's it's an inch and a half solid hose 
and when you run your line of course you just put in a plastic PVC cap and clamp it off. And that's how simple it is very simple to put in this system. You can do it by hand but having a machine to do it like we did uh, and we want to thank the Oklahoma Agricultural Department for that uh, that machine is just nice. You can get a machine that's a little bit smaller, doesn't build quite as big of a row, for about $2,000. And the machine, for instance, that they were using, I think was uh, uh, about $4,000 uh, or just a last experiment, I should call it. We had a uh, really good hailstorm last year. And so uh, it did kind of mess with things. That was the, the one disadvantage. This is our actually our second year, and what did I, I wanted to show you on just amending our first DVD was, for instance, we planted some root crops, and we put in some carrots, for instance. And you can see the size of the carrots that are growing. Uh, so it makes it a nice experiment for the root crops as far as that goes. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you the tomato plants uh, that we have in here. I'm going to show you the lettuce and then we also have some onions, uh, which for the first time is a, a new experiment for us. Then we're going to take and go over to our small garden area and I'm going to show you those carrots, those tomato plants. Uh, you know that lettuce and show you the difference that it makes now even with cold crops uh, tomatoes aren't necessarily a cold crop but we like to get in for instance the lettuce and stuff is this is such an efficient way of farming uh, I'm really impressed with it as you can see behind me these are the tomato plants for instance this is one tomato plant. Now, we're not putting them on trellises, otherwise they'd be a lot taller. But it shows you the size that this thing is getting. And of course, we have some really nice tomatoes. We have this whole, whole line of it. So that makes the difference, you know, in between the plastic culture and a regular convention gardening. To me, plastic culture is, is a step down from hydroponics, but far bigger step up than just conventional gardening. And so we'll take the time now, we'll go over and we'll show you some of the lettuce. Uh, and you can just see the difference yourself. And I think that's why we're amending this slightly, is because seeing is believing. Now this is uh, our lettuce, like romaine for instance. You can see how beautiful these plants have grown. And it's really nice too because none of the bugs are really walking around. They're not eating our plants. Uh, we don't use pesticides, mind you. So it's, it's not that we're using pesticides. They don't necessarily like this plastic culture itself. And so it really is a great conservation. Uh, here's another type. You know, it's growing beautifully. And of course we need a harvest, uh, but it's just such a difference in what you see compared to conventional. And that's just what I want to point out. We'll show you a little glimpse of the onions, uh, which are doing great. That's another root crop. We, did, we are growing beets also, but I didn't figure to show you because we actually don't have a comparison. So, But uh, root crops grow just as well in this stuff. And just a quick quick glimpse at uh, our onions. As you can see, they just grow right up through. Uh, some get a little tight, so you just make a little bit of room for them. But they're doing fantastic. Uh, like I said, it's one of the first times that we've done onions. I think the beets are really doing phenomenal as well uh, in this. It is just a superior system. And as you can see from this little section, uh, just going on out, everything is growing extremely well. We don't have a, a big bug population. Uh, our green beans are doing fantastic. Uh, matter of fact, we're harvesting about a, 
half a bushel a day uh, until the rest of them catch up and then it's going to be a whole lot more. So this is just the very first stages of it. And we wanted to uh, just kind of show everybody, uh, especially for the survival preparedness conference uh, that we'll be at uh, here in uh, just a few more days, that uh, things in southeast Oklahoma are growing fantastic. We've heard from other farmers that it's been too cold or not enough rain, and so a lot of people have not put in their okra, they haven't put in their watermelon. There's a lot of crops that they are not able to do. But as you can see, it absolutely does not bother us. And so now we'll, we'll go ahead and, and walk on over to the conventional little aspects and show you the difference. So be sure to, to remember everything in your mind because <laughs> there is a difference. Now, as you can see, same type of carrot. We transplanted the ground from out there to here, so it's the same soil. The only difference is one's in plastic culture, the other one isn't. So as you can see by comparison, these aren't looking as good, but they're not in a controlled environment, so to speak. I, you know, we can't control the air, of course, or sunshine or anything else, but when it comes to water or the heating of the soil, bug control, the microclimate underneath that plastic, that is basically controlled, and there is a difference. Now we do have just some little lettuce that we planted here, but this ain't the lettuce I want to show you, but you can see how pitiful this lettuce is. Big difference. And of course we have tomato plants, the exact same type of tomato plants. We haven't done anything different except one's in plastic culture, one isn't. Now, if you can see, this is actually four tomato plants. So these four tomato plants do not even compare to the one tomato plant that's out there in the plastic culture. So when they say that you can increase yield by anywhere from 100 to 300 percent, I think that we have actually proved that, and I would have to agree. Yes, absolutely, you can increase the yield. Now, we'll go over and I'll show you the, the, the other lettuce patch that is actually in chicken manure. And we figured the chicken manure, because it has a lot more nutrients than our soil out there, let's, let's look at the difference. This actual area is where we do our herbs, <laughs> but uh, because it was just loaded with our old chicken coop and chicken manure. And everybody always tells me how great chicken manure is and stuff. So we thought, well, we'll throw some lettuce in here just for ourselves. Well, as you can see, yes, they are bigger than the regulars, but they still do not compare to the plastic culture. I mean, they're, they're not as big, they don't look as healthy, they're a little discolored. You still can compare. So somebody can't say, well, maybe the soil was a little different. Okay, I got one of the best soils here. Rabbit, chicken, it's still nothing. And so I, once again, think that this absolutely proves the system. So that's uh, pretty much our presentation, other than uh, some added field notes that we've discovered on uh, the DVD, and we'll amend this. And uh, We hope these field notes will help you better understand and manage the plaster culture system. Water conservation is most efficient, and one half acre can be watered for 45 minutes once per week. But of course, each row should be checked daily. If you have 20 PSI's or more with a one-half acre system and you want to water only one row, 
you will need to put a water reducer on to prevent the overpressurization of your system. Also remember, in midsummer, you should purge the water line or only water first thing in the morning. This is due to leftover water residue in your system that is being heated by the sun and can burn your plants. If you want to increase seed germination, especially when it comes to seeds that only require a 1 8 to 1 4 inch of soil covering, you will need to apply a small amount of water using a pump sprayer once per day until sprouted. This will effectively increase your seed germination and sprouting to approximately 95%. Make sure the holes are big enough for your plants to sprout and find their way out. Bean plants, for instance, are what we call dumb plants and need at least a silver dollar size hole to find the sun's light. Remember that seed germination is anywhere between 7 to 14 days faster in most cases and in some cases like green beans just two to three days. Always remember to check your system daily and before each water clean your filter. Your filters will collect sand or micro particles and should be cleaned before every watering. We hope you've enjoyed this Plastic Culture DVD and thank you. Thank you.